Hey everybody, Dr. Nelson here. Uh, this is a video about the characteristics of repeating decimals. So altogether, there's four pages. So the first three pages, you're gonna follow along with me. And then at the end, you'll have a chance to try some problems on your own and they can see how you did. All right, so let's first talk about this. What exactly uh, do we mean when, when a decimal terminates, okay? So right here, we have 0 0.375, all right? This decimal terminates because five is the last decimal, okay? so. Uh, 7.2459, 9.8, okay, these are all examples of decimals that terminate. They have a definite ending point, okay? Um, the opposite of that are repeating decimals. All right, a repeating decimal is when a number keeps on going forever. So, for example, four ninths as a, a decimal is 0 0.44444. Those dots mean that that four is going to continue forever, okay? So, it'll never end. So, a terminating decimal definitely has an ending point. But then a repeating decimal um, does not, just repeats again and again and again and again and again. All right? Now, one thing that these both have in common is that terminating decimals and repeating decimals are all rational. So please write the word rational right above this. All right? So anytime you see a terminating decimal or a repeating decimal, um, it certainly is going to be um, rational. All right, so if you turn the page, And so how do we identify fractions that terminate, okay, when they're in decimal form, all right? So like, for example, say uh, if we have the number like one half, okay? Well, we know one half equals 0 0.5 and that terminates, right? We could add some zeros, but really one half equals 0 0.5 and that's it. Same thing like say one, uh, let's say one fifth. Well, one fifth equals two tenths, which is really 0 0.2. So the rules for identifying fractions that terminate as decimals, really there's two parts, okay? So any fraction that has, of course, that has a numerator and denominator, all right? But any time the denominator equals one, you certainly know that the fraction is gonna terminate, all right? So for example, if we have seven over one, well, that's the seven holes, which is 7.0, and there it is. Another example could be, say, negative nine over one, all right? So that's, that's kind of the basic one. If you ever have a denominator of one, you know that the uh, the decimal is going to terminate. Now, this one is a little more advanced. Um, the second characteristic is when you look at the denominator, all right, so in this case, our, our letter D, all right, and you factor it, okay, uh, the, the important thing is that the prime factors consist of two and five. So the prime factors, prime factors, consist of two and five, all right? So let me clarify. Let's say, for example, we have uh, the decimal, or say the fraction three, let's say 20th, all right? So our 20 is gonna be our denominator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write 20 over here and I'm gonna write a factor tree for 20. So 20 can be five times four. So five is prime and then four is the product of two and two. So our prime factors are two, two, and five. Because it's only five and twos involved with, with the factors, we know that 3 20ths is gonna terminate as, as a decimal, okay? If there was any other prime factor here, all right, besides a five and a two, then it's gonna repeat and, and not terminate, all right? So let's say, for example, we have another one. How about, um, say, four over, 50, all right? Now, before we we test the, the 50, we wanna make sure this fraction can be reduced. So 4 50ths uh, can be reduced by two, right? So it's gonna be two 25ths. And now our 25, right, can be factored down to a five and a five. So five is the only prime factor, right? So because it's, it's either a two and a five or both, um, 4 50ths would be a terminating decimal um, as, as a decimal. All right, so if you turn the page, now let's talk about the characteristics of decimals that repeat, all right? So really, this is just the opposite of, of the previous page. So we know that decimals are gonna terminate uh, when the denominators consist of prime factors that are two and five, okay? Well, what makes it repeat is if there's any other prime factors besides a two and a five, all right? So the rule is for the denominator, 
is any additional prime factors besides 2 and 5. All right. So if it's only 2 and 5, we know it's going to terminate. But if there's any other prime factors besides 2 and 5, it's going to repeat. So let's take a look, say, at uh, the fraction, say, 7 thirtieths. Okay? So the first thing we have to say is, can I reduce 7 thirtieths? And the answer is no. So now let's take a look at the denominator 30, and let's make a factor tree. So 30 can be 6 times 5. So here we have a 5. That's a prime factor, right? But now take a look at the 6. We can break down the 6 to a 3 and a 2. And because we now have a 3 as a prime factor, okay, so we have a 5 and a 2, but because we have the 3 thrown in there, right, now the decimal is going to repeat. Now let me, let me prove it to you. So if I take out my calculator here and I say 7 divided by 30 and it equals, look at that. 0 0.2333333 and so on. All right. So let's try one more. Say if I said we have the uh, the fraction, say, 5, say, uh, how about 90 ninths? All right. So again, first of all, can I reduce it? No. Um, so 99, we could say, is 9 times 11. And then 9 is 3 and 3. And then 11 is this 11, right? So we don't actually even have a 2 or 5 in here, right? So if I check check with the calculator now, so 5 divided by 99, we have 0 0.050505 0 .05 0 .05 and, and it repeats. And there it is. All right, so now they understand a little more about what makes a decimal repeat and terminate, why don't you pause the video and try the your turn problem now. And then when you're done, hit play. You can see how you did. All right, good luck. All right, welcome back. Let's say you did with this your turn now problem, okay? So for this, we have we have four fractions, and you need to identify the terminating decimals by putting a box around them, and then you want to circle the ones that we're, we're repeating. So remember, that number five and two, if the, the prime factors of the denominator are only five or two or both, you know it's going to terminate. So here we have 55, and I know 55 can be five and 11, so five is prime, and 11 is prime. So because we have 11 in there, we know it's going to repeat. So this is going to be a repeating fraction. All right, the next one, 15. Well, 15 can be 5 and 3. And 5 is prime, and so is 3, right? And because we have a 3 in there, we know this one is also going to repeat. All right, the next one, 22 25ths. Well, 25 is 5 times 5, and that's it, right? So because we, all we have is 5s, um, we know that this one is going to terminate. Let's put a box around that one. And then finally, 17 18ths. Uh, 18 can be 9 and 2. And then 9 is 3 and 3. And because we have a prime factor of 3 in there, we know this is also going to repeat, all right? But there's one huge rule you have to remember before you do this, okay? You must make sure that the fractions are reduced. Please write this down. Fractions are reduced or simplified before you test the uh, denominators. All right, how'd you do?